If you're an English language teacher, I think you're gonna find this video really interesting. It's one of the biggest AI projects that I've seen for teaching English. And basically the website that I'm gonna show you allows you to create a whole mass of different activity types all around video and audio and speaking and grammar and vocabulary, literally everything. And it's all AI produced. And the great thing is as well, is that you can reduce a range of activities all connected to one topic and then share them with your students. Now, like all AI projects, this is very much at the beginning. I have come across a couple of mistakes. It's not absolutely perfect when creating all the different types of activities that are possible, but overall, I'm very, very impressed. And this could save you masses of time and allow you to be really, really productive. So as always, I really hope you like the video. And if you do, please like it, please share it, please comment on it. And of course, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. And as I said, keep in mind, occasionally it does produce a mistake, but overall, and I'm gonna show you five or six really good ideas. I think you're gonna be very impressed with this technology. Just super quick before we start, because people always ask me how I make my videos. I use Camtasia, and if you are interested, look in the description below. You can download and test Camtasia for free, and you'll also see a great discount with an even an additional discount uh, on the educational version and on the commercial version. There is a code that you can use to get an additional 10%, and that's below in the description. Plus, there's a complete free course in using Camtasia, six-part course, and I've also put that in the link below in the description. Okay, let's get on with the video. Okay, so we're on the website now. As you can see, AI powered tools for English teachers. Now I've created an account, an account is free. So I log in and I'm logged into my account. And if we were to look at the tools, then you will be amazed how many there are. So, there's all things around reading, there's all things around learning and practicing new words, there's all things around working with video, with drills, getting students to speak by creating conversation, ideas for homework, etc. So what I'm gonna try and do, and you've got this menu system here on the left-hand side that you can access as well that can help you to find what you want, is try to build up a few lessons for you so you can see exactly how the technology works. So remember to click always on the tools button. That's the one you want. And let's start by doing something around vocabulary. So we're gonna click here and you'll see that you've got a whole mass of activities. So just that one area, vocabulary, offers you all these different types of activities, including fill in the gaps, create matching exercises, etc. So let's try and do a fill in the gaps exercise. So we're gonna click on this one here. Now all you have to actually do is paste in a text and then basically click on the words that you want to make a gap fill from and then click on do the magic. So let's quickly do that. So I'm gonna grab a piece of text from my own website. Obviously then there's no problems with copyright or anything. So I'm just gonna copy this here. Just grab that little bit of text, jump back to the website. And then I'm just gonna paste that text in. And then all I need to do is just click on the word. So I'm gonna put here university one, and then I'm gonna do, for example, international house, make that another one. And then we'll come down here and we'll do education college. So we've done three. We've clicked on three words. Now what I'm gonna do is click on do the magic, okay? And hopefully we should see that that activity was created, as you can see, with three gaps. Now, I only did three gaps. I could have done more. We did university, house, and college. Now, let's look at some of the ways now that we can work with that. One thing to keep in mind, you can add to this. You're not limited to just creating one activity. But before we build more activities around the same topic, let's just look at how we can share this. So one obvious thing that we can do is click here on save as a PDF. So we're gonna include the answers and click on save as a PDF. So we just click here and let's see what happens and whether that works. It downloads a PDF file. You can see it here at the bottom on the left. I'm gonna click on that and I'm gonna open it up and you can see that it provides me 
with the PDF file and then on a separate page it gives me the answers. Now I did that very quickly with just a few examples just to highlight how useful this technology can be in terms of the speed with which it can create activities. And remember there are literally not hundreds but certainly tens of exercises that you can do. Now some of you might be interested more in a tool that generates activities where you can then share the link so the students can do the activities online. And if you are interested in such a tool, the one that I would recommend would be Wordwall, incredibly popular and very similar to Twee. It has over 30 different activity types and I'll put that on the screen now just in case you wanna watch a video about that particular technology. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click here on reading and I'm going to create a text. So I'm going to click on this button here. And this one's now going to add to that activity. So we're going to have a second activity of reading. Now, interestingly enough, we can get the AI tool to generate the text. So I'm going to write in a topic and I'm going to write here life in Poland. Okay, then I'm going to put here what type of text do I want? Well, I want this to be a, for example, a descriptive article and then I'm going to choose the level well I'll have an intermediate level and is there any specific words that I want to use so I'm actually going to type in some specific words that I want to include in this story so I've asked for a story life in Poland descriptive article level b1 b2 and I want to include the following words and this is really useful because it can mean that you can practice certain vocabulary that maybe you've worked with with your students in the class. So if I click on do the magic, watch what happens here on the right hand side, it begins to write a text. Now I've noticed that these texts are excellent. And this is one of the, obviously you can do this in chat GPT as well, but there are particular reasons why you might wanna do it in this technology. And that's to do with the way you can link it to other activities as you'll see in a minute. Now I've been making a lot of videos about AI tools and if you click on the screen now that here's one of the most popular ones that I've come across which is called Natural Readers which allows you to take any text and listen to it being read out by a native speaker and it works in many different languages and with many different accents as well. It's a really good tool and it's free and the link's on the screen now if you're interested in learning more about using AI for pronunciation and listening work. Now this is really interesting because if you look here, we've got this text here that we've now produced at level B1, B2. And if you come down here below, it says don't stop, create, and we can do here a word definition matching, a dialogue with the target vocabulary, sentences with target of vocabulary, commutative situations, etc. So let's just try and see how quick from this text we can build up some other activities. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do word definition matching. So I'm gonna click on that. Uh, it will choose the words that I'd highlighted and I'm gonna click on do the magic. And presumably what that's now gonna do is take the definitions of the words and create a matching activity for me. Now you would need to check through this um, where I have noticed problems that actually hasn't been in this type of activity. It's been in particularly when I've asked it to do examples of grammar and sometimes it hasn't quite done them correctly. Though, as I said, generally it's very good. This type of activity is normally very good because they draw the text from a dictionary, I'm presuming, or from the database of information that they've managed to pull together. I'm presuming this um, website actually links to something like ChatGPT. It's probably pulling data from there. But look how easy I can make a activity, which is a matching activity where students would need to read, read the text and match it to the correct letter. Okay, so now you start to see the power of this technology because what you're actually doing is building a whole lesson full of activities that you might want your students to do. So we've now got this second activity, but let's see if we want to do something a little bit more interesting as well here. Okay, so I'm going to do, um, it says don't stop, create using the words. So we can continue working with this language here or continue working here as well with the text that we've actually generated as well. So notice also, 
also just here, and I hadn't pointed this out, sorry, is that you can shorten the text as well. If you think, well, the text is too long, you could make a short, uh, ver shorter version of that particular text, okay? So just coming back up to here again, and something else I want to point out is that you can kind of jump around. So if I wanted to come back here and create a different type of activity, and I'm going to for example, produce some sentences with the target vocabulary. I click there and it will then add this extra activity. And again, it's choosing the target vocabulary that I've asked to focus on. Um, I'm going to shift the level to, I've got simple or advanced here. So I haven't actually got three levels. And then you can click on do the magic and it's going to create some sentences with the target vocabulary that you wanted to practice. So you can see how powerful this is of building up content. Now if we click again over here on save as PDF, now that we've got lots and lots of activities together, look at the difference in the activity now. Suddenly you've got all of these activities all generated together. And of course, very important at the end, you've got the answers. If you are interested in this whole idea of using AI for language teaching, I've made a video where I focused on some of my favorite AI tools for teaching English. It's quite a popular video and you can see that on the screen now and you can click on the link and access that if you want to see other AI tools that you can use. Now I'm back on tools and I want to just show you a couple of things if we come down to the listening here, a couple of things that I find very interesting that we can do with this channel. Um, I'm going to click on this first one here which says YouTube video text. So I'm going to click on it and I'm going to paste in a link to a video. Now let me just make it very clear how I copied the link. So I just went over to this video here and I just copied this link here from the top. Okay, so that's where I got the link from. I'm going to come back to Twee. I'm going to paste that link in. And then what I'm going to do here is come down here. And it only does, I think it's up to five minutes. But if I click on do the magic, it's going to extract for me the text or the, the text for the first five minutes of that video. So that's a really interesting thing. And I think that can be very useful. Now, I'm presuming because I haven't tried this out yet with uh, many videos. So the videos so far have all worked. I'm presuming if the video does not provide um, a uh, transcript, I'm presuming that wouldn't work, but I could be wrong there. I would have to test that out with a variety of videos to find out. But certainly with this video, it works perfectly. But if we jump back to the list in a minute, so I'm just gonna click on back home. I'm not gonna save that. And again, staying on tools, coming down to listening, I wanna show you this one, create questions for a YouTube video. So the same thing here, if we paste in the video link, and we'll use the same one just to save time. Again, it's taking the first five minutes. We've got various things here. We've got A, B, C, D. Uh, we've got true or false statements, so we've got open questions. So let's try for this one, A, B, C, D questions, and I'm gonna click on do the magic, and presumably it's gonna produce for me multiple choice questions. Now, of course, you could use all of these questions, but you might only use some of them. Some of them are, are more interesting than others. I'm not, again, saying that this tool is 100%. I'm saying it's a great support for teachers. It can really help you. It can save you lots of time. And, you know, there are masses of tools here. I mean, I've only just touched on just a few of the basics in this video, um, but you get a real good idea that it's certainly worth going over and having a look at this technology and seeing what you think of it. Okay, really hope you liked that video. And if you did, please come over to teachertrainingvideos.com. Loads more free videos. I specialize in making videos about technology in language teaching. You'll see lots of content on the front page. You can also find out about the courses that I run. And the other thing that I can suggest is that you sign up to the newsletter. If you do that, there is a free 14 part no tricks video course in how to integrate technology into your language teaching. And also you'll get updated on all the latest blogs, the videos, the free webinars that we often run as well as, as of course the new courses. And finally, uh, if you do want to contact me about doing any training with your organization, you can contact me from the website. I'm going to leave some more videos on the screen now about um, language and AI.